Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video, and I am at Day and White's. And this is a big day because I've come down here to collect the Lancia Fulvia Zagate. It's finished, all ready to go, and it's hiding in there under a black cover. I have actually said, do not send me any pictures of this, so you will join me at the moment I see this completed the first time. If you're wondering why there's a Testarossa here, I've come down the trailer because I'm going to actually trade it back home. And the Testarossa is here because I'm actually going to do a few things. Sam at uh, Prestige Refinishing is just going to help fit this bonnet better. It's always wound me up that it's always had a, the bonnet hasn't sit, sat where it should sit on the Testarossa. And there's no better person to sort all this out. You also see this headlight. That should be actually parallel with that. It isn't. So anyway, he's going to have a, a go at that. And uh, I'm going to collect that in a few weeks time. But hiding in here is the Lancia. Let's go have a look inside. Ooh, Lancia's everywhere. Hello, Mike. Hello, Alex. How are you, Harry? All right. Nice to see you. Well, it's a big day. Yeah. And you have a here. Thank you, Gordon. Hello. Taking the wild engine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There is, isn't it's there? It's busy. Yeah, right, there he is. Aha. Uh -huh. so, under a cover. So I've seen that one before, I haven't seen this one before. You no, know, this is a daily driver. In fact, he's done a lot. He goes up to Scotland with it and yeah. favourite with a Dorset at the weekend. Right. Pick up a couple of seat frames. Lives in London, know you less to worry about. Oh, you, oh of course, because it's classic. Yeah. That's the idea. Yeah. yeah. K-Red, same age, so yeah. But yeah, so he's bought it as a user. How long has he had it then? He's probably had it about two, two and a half years. Um, but he does, it is always in use. Just, yeah. yeah. Whereas oh, fantastic. As an everyday runner, I mean, these are these can be bought quite sort of reasonably. Yeah, and um, he's, you're just doing the um, valve clearance or something. Yeah, exactly. Like. Yeah. I can't get over how quick this has all happened, actually. Yeah, well, we've, we've all worked on it with, a, with that main intention of getting it together and getting it finished. Yeah. We don't like things hanging around too long, otherwise they end up like this. We don't want that. Yeah. Um, we want this one sort of back out and you're using it. But, yeah, as I say, I haven't seen photos of this at no. all. No, and not since uh, it's been totally together and everything on. Yeah. This is the first time it'll be, um, it'll be seen well, by your good well, self. Well, yeah, we, last time I was here, I looked at end of October. So, uh, yeah, it's had November. You've had you're about six, seven weeks since I was last here. The last five, ten percent, trust me, is the bit that takes I don't, time. I don't, but it's, uh, well, yeah. I, the bit, because I came down to have the engine fitted in, and I mm. thought, well, this will take all afternoon, and it was done mm. in like an hour mm. and a bit. Mm. And it, ha it has happened a lot quicker than I expected, actually, since the body shell yeah, came no, back. All, all hangs on. And of course, you've got to take great care of the, the good work Sam's done. Yeah. Um, you know. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, the colour. Look at the colour. Look at the edges. Look at the sharp oh, edges. Oh, there's a lot to see on the front. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we had the stripe, hasn't it? We've yeah. been dealing with the stripe, which I have yeah. not Lenses. seen. Yeah. Yeah, oh. Who's going to take the cover off? Oh, we need more than one, isn't it? Yeah, you take think? One, uh, James, you take that side up, bungee. Oh, it is a good one. Really? Wow. And then you've got to do Oh, wow. Good lord. Look at that front. Wow, that is... Oh, oh it takes me back. <coughs> How old is this? 1972. This is 50 years old, isn't it? Mm. Oh. Earl's got motor to show 1972. <laughs> oh. through the yeah. car. No wow. I've just never seen one like this. I've oh. never seen one like this. And the mirror. Yes. Yeah, I wanted a mirror. 
I like that mirror. It was a perfect position. It all worked a treat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just when for driving, it is absolutely perfect. Wow. Well, it's better than I dared hope looking at that. Oh, those stripes, it's just right. Badging, it's just mega nice. You know, I'm a complete sucker for the covered headlights, which weren't a standard feature really, on that. Actually, we all comes on, we sort of understand it because it follows the contour goes around, it follows the shape. That's what I think. Yeah. So does. And the no bumpers, obviously, it was done, done to my spec. Fantastic. Well, I suppose we ought to look around some details of it, shouldn't we? Yeah. See what you've been up to. Yeah. Well, we can open the bonnet first. Do you want to do that? Do you remember how to lift the bonnet? No, I don't really. It's been like two years. Oh, exactly. Latch up on the left. Latch up on the left. Right. Yeah. Okay. I always open from this side. Um, right. Those stripes, look at those. And even, I mean, to be fair to. Wow, we. What a picture. And it all fits under the bonnet then? Yeah, it all fits under the bonnet. Um, yeah, you had to do a little bit with the. We did do, yeah, this was, and actually it was quite funny, it was a bit of an oversight from the, on the radiator being made um, yeah. on our end, because we've made a couple of these. Yeah, and this has to drop away here, which the, the original one did anyway. Right. It's slightly different to the four wheel ones, um, the standard ones, because they just sit quite upright. But these actually drop away with this sort of canter wow. here. Um, but yeah, no, all the little trim bits have been put on the wiring. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. We've yes. kept that sort of, tried to keep the details in. Really? The boot lock, the bonnet catches. Where did you get that sticker from? That bright blue Came thing. in from Milan. Same God. thing, gives it a bit of the, or just gives it a bit of that detail which looks nice yeah. and tasty in what we've got funny enough. Wow. And how much driving have you managed to do? Because the weather hasn't been No, tight. but unfortunately because of the, we were trying to get this thing finished, yeah. it was, um, and I, I thought, oh no, snow's coming, salt on the roads, yes. no way we're going to drive no. on the salty roads. <laughs> So we, uh, I managed to just get it out, take out the lane, take out Scratch's lane yeah. before the before we bring it back. We'd only just got the doors on, so it really was still quite bare. Not, a lot of the glass wasn't in it. So yeah. I thought we'd just have to get the feel of the suspension, the brakes, uh, and the steering and the suspension was like really, really good. Right. In fact, even the steering was like you know dead straight, considering everything had been off. We have done the wheel alignment, obviously. But it was just a matter of just making sure that you know, it does drive, it is together, yeah. there's nothing that's sort of in your face. Right. Um, I know, then we just brought it back, put everything on it. Unfortunately, the snow came and we haven't had a chance to drive no. it since, so we are being sort of realistic. It is just together, literally yesterday, the strike went on and that sort of finished that side of right. it off. So one has to be a bit sort of right. realistic and taking it out. And, seeing how it goes from there. Yeah. So you've been through the gears, you've done like five miles, in yeah. it, something like that, yeah. five, six yeah. miles. And it starts good, does it? Oh, no, 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 on the button. Yeah. Absolutely on the button. Yeah. So what have you done since the last... Um, well, it's a okay, came in engine-wise, all we've done is check obviously, the fuel air mixture, see if that's running at um, basic tuning and ignition timing, to check the ignition timing is all set up. Um, right. And that's it, done. So we okay. know where the fuel is, how much fuel is sort of being burnt off. Um, no jetting or anything like that yet until it comes to um, the tuning after sort of four right. or five hundred miles and then we'll check and see really what's happening what needs to be done it is running quite lean against running too rich which right. is fine so actually it, it, it all starts up right it doesn't overfuel or anything like this no. uh, which is pretty important oh, right so I've got to get 500 miles on it yeah somehow yes yeah yeah. yeah well we'll see we're not going to rush those no. miles no, I mean, a lot's been off and a lot's gone on, <laughs> but it's that sort of a, but no, I mean, look at it, all the trim, everything's just I know, and fantastic. it is, I mean, it's all this glass, all the rubbers and stuff, we have to be oh, checked this, over. Yeah, this is replaced. all new, isn't it? Yeah. You know, all the roof lining here. as well, which I don't think, I don't know if it's been sort of showing up yet, but yeah. make sure all the glass goes in with the roof lining as it is, and it's quite, even put these chrome trims on, you've got to make sure they go in the rubbers first before the glass goes in. Yeah. And again, Gosh. we couldn't get these bits, so these all had to be sort of, you know, Redone and re-chromed. These are my done. original pieces. The original pieces, pieces the trim. all sort of polished and re. God. All the handles again, same thing. And this all works, doesn't it? Now, yeah. no, that, that was the other yeah. side, wasn't it? A double skin. Yeah. These are all beautifully done. So these are all been restored as well. Yeah, yeah the, uh, it's not the greatest value metal they used on these. But no, a nice job. It was never meant to last no. fifty odd no. years, was it? Yeah. Really. There it is. But look inside. So I love that wheel. I know it's not a standard wheel, but it really sets it off. That's stunning. I mean, it's the, obviously the seats were re-trimmed before my time, but they were. And then you re-trimmed the back, haven't you, in leather as well. This is really good. 
Under all the lights, well, it's really, really still the, uh, oh. the light. Look, it's under the under the. Thing. You've got a limited yeah, light now. Yeah. Right, so, no. yeah. <laughs> okay, something I've never seen. <laughs> well, they don't work. But we've already plugged all that in, so it is like it would have been. So, yeah. not that we want it to break down in the night time, but at least you've got a light to, uh, to see. Yeah, I can't. And you, I, I remember, you know, we've been speaking oh, while it's been going. Windows. It's electric windows, oh, isn't it? Right. Oh, the, the, well, it's electric windows, but they're not standard windows. So, basically, what someone's done is taken out normally on wires and cables. And they've yeah. taken all that out and they just really thrown in these regulators, electric window regulators, and made them work. Um, which is a bit awkward because you don't have everything to go by. So when you're used to the original ones, you go, that's okay, I can make this happen. On this, it's like, how did, how did this all fit? How did this all squeeze in? Um, so it was a bit sort of precarious it's putting that so together. Odd, isn't it? Because when you're doing a rebuild, as a layman, you think, oh, it's the engine and the gearbox. Yeah, no, no, no. That's it's windows, absolutely. electric windows. No, it's the, the trim and all this stuff. That's, all this bits and pieces, getting this to happen is the hardest thing. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's new rubbers, new rubbers, rubbers which is so normal work. It time they settle down. Oh, but even like the tailgate, the straps, how yeah. that goes down. Because this is, don't forget, this is the one that um, they've made. Yeah, and uh, which is an incredible job. Um, yes. And it all, it all fits. Obviously, that's up. So yes, if you want, it, you can use the actuator to bring it down. I would. I might just do that. It's such an odd feature. I know no other car with that an electric tailgate. Just and that's your rear windows, isn't it? Yeah. That's so Lancia though. Oh yeah, I haven't looked round the back, and then you've got the stick-on number plate again. Yeah, stick on just plate, to stick it off, off. and the big pipe. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's work. Well, that was an absolutely magic moment, I have to say. So now it's time to drive it out, <laughs> <laughs> put it on the trailer. Oh, you've got some keys. Oh. Brian has the keys. Look at that. I have to remember which key it is. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget fuel pump. Oh yeah, fuel pump, yeah. Has it started today? Uh, this morning I think we had it on, just moving it's on. Got fuel pump on. It is on, so I hear something going. Yeah, that's it. Where is that it? You've got to go to the top. and things like that but just brilliant absolutely brilliant and like as i say this last bit put it together has been extraordinarily fast you know it was a year wasn't it down with sam and, uh, and here it is just but it was a, it was the point that we wanted it to get it together swiftly we don't want to be things sort of laboring and moving on no just match it no 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 really right. please really no it's been fantastic well, no, well, you know well, i mean it is it, you know there's so many people involved in it, mm. yeah. you know, and it's been great because everyone has put like, it was a lot of hours and time yeah, into it to make it what, what yeah. it is. But, you know, I mean, the proof is in the pudding mm. and, yeah. um, you know, the smile on your face that it all... A very special all, car. Very, very special. No. And it looks more like the car that you had when you first saw it. <laughs> it is, it I know it was only an engine rebuild, <laughs> my goodness me. <laughs> if you're going to go there... Oh. You know, it was an engine, well, one hell of an engine rebuild, but look at the result. I know. Well, we got back last night and the, today the plan with the Zagato was to take it out and do a quick drive to finish off the video. But the weather has turned all British on us. It's raining outside, it's a bit foggy and it's generally miserable. But you will notice that there's a very nice Fulvia next door to the Zagato. 
It is a genuine Fulvia 1.6 rally car from 1971. I noticed the hairpin company had just got this car in for sale and I thought, well, this is an opportunity to get these two fantastic 1.6 Lanciers together and just to do a sort of comparison. When I look at the two cars together, I, ca I can hardly believe the mechanicals are identical. What I can never get over with the Zagato version of the Fulvia is how different it is. It's a genuinely reskin, a completely rethought Fulvia. And you used to, I think it echoes what Zagato was about. And when it first started out, it was an aeronautical company. And you took your car to Zagato because you wanted it to be quicker. They'd put a more aerodynamic body on it, lighten it. And that is what Zagato got known for, DB4, GT, etc. It's for racing a higher top speed than the standard car. And if you put these two together, you can see that so well on the little Fulvia um, Sport. It's shrunken, it's smaller, it doesn't have such a big presence, the wind flowing past it, it's got that teardrop rear end. It just has less volume to it. And that is reflected in its top speed. It's 120 mile an hour top speed and a Fulvia 1.6, not Wilkes Rally car, but a regular uh, 1.6 HF is 106 miles an hour purely because of the shape of the car. That's what Zagato added. But this is such a lovely thing. I, I, I can't get over the engine is near identical spec as well. This is tuned, it's got the Weber 45s on, which is what I fitted to that one. So basically the engine spec I've gone for for my car is the spec of this. It's not actually chasing ultimate horsepower, although they say it might be 160. I'm expecting about 130, 140 from it. It's torque that wins rallies, and that's what I wanted for this as a road car. But yeah, lovely to get them side by side. I can't get over the amount of glass on the Fulvia when you look at it today, but it's a gorgeous looking car. But if you go round the back, incredible how different they are from behind. This can sort of finished off tail here, which was sort of fashionable today, huge petrol tank. If I lifted this up, this has a tank that goes all the way around there, but look at the amount of glass on it. Then go to the Zagato and this teardrop look really, um, so it's, it's to go through the air, as you can tell, and this lovely hatchback and this brand new done by Prestige Refinishing, metal hatchback, as, as I showed yesterday, how it lifts up and that's your ventilation. I also like the, the debumpered look as well. And just some things we saved from, uh, to sell, sort of celebrate the rebuild on the Zagato. There's a bit of metal. There's a bit of metal from that front wing. I think it's around here. It was cut out there and Aid, um, his metal magician, cut it out. So this is the sort of wells, this is the horrible state of this body before we started this process. And I've got them to sign it as a bit of memorabilia from the, this rebuild we've done. Also the colour, so pleased with the colour. This was the, this is the door skin. Could, it could be, I think it's actually, is it that one? Not sure, it might be from the other side, but you can see the colour there. That is how we got the colour for this car. So basically we've matched that original door skin that we found when we took the doors apart, etc. And that's why it's this colour. It's fantastic to have this in the garage. The history on this car, it's a genuine works rally car, this one. There are a number of copies, as you imagine, of the Fulvia rally, but this has proper history with it. It raced campaign right through 1971, did several rallies and just, it's got a great big light bar if you want to put that on it as well. Amazing to see it, value wise, a lot. I think the asking price is 225,000 or somewhere around there but they're highly sought after. It's got FAI papers. It can be entered in all sorts of things. And I knew John Hughes, who sadly died in 2017, and he campaigned it in the classic Monte Carlo rally. That was what he bought this car for. Just great to see it here. My Zagato, though, one big debating point was the stripe on the front bonnet. This is how I remember it. And I have to say, when they took those covers off yesterday, it was a bit of a tearjerker because it took me back to 1972, 1973, when I saw this outside the house. As you can imagine, looking at it now, 
my goodness, in a sea of maxis and vivas and minis and things like that, see that parked on your street was a bit of a wow moment. And it was a bit of a wow moment yesterday to see it again, just as I'd remembered it. I also like about, I hadn't really realised, but with the alloy radiator and the alloy engine and things, how much you actually see through the grill here. It looks very mechanical. It sort of reminds me of, well, things like the 288 GTO from behind. You see the gearbox hanging out. I love the way the mechanicals are all on there. And I've also kept it debumpered. I mean, yes, I've had it restored, but this is not gone back to originality i wanted the flared in lights i wanted it debumpered i wanted it to see angry and i just look at it and i just want to drive it exactly what i wanted it's interesting the stripe though if i i went off the brochure if i look at the brochure original brochure it was quite a wide stripe and you'll see a number of zagatos and they somehow have a narrow stripe on it i've got a picture of this car from 1980 and it had a narrow strap and day and whites have a silver one 1600 they look after and that has a very narrow stripe and it just looks wrong to me i'm so chuffed with the way this looks now it's just great plan now is i have to do 500 miles in it and then we'll do some snagging on it if we find anything we want they want to lift the bonnet up slightly here which is just an adjustment on the catch other little details around i'm sure we're fine but i haven't mentioned cost and when it went in for an engine rebuild i really wasn't expecting the journey that we then ended up in but i didn't mind i actually really enjoyed it once i saw the skill sets of well day and white just the stripping of the engine and doing uh, rebuilding the engine was great and then to see the metal work and aid how you could just turn a flat bit of metal into those sort of rear bars and get the shape of the car and get those crease lines i was just hooked on it and I went the whole hog, because this is a very special car to me. If you see that original video and realize why this is very personal, this actual car to me, I'll put a link up in the video now. That's why I went the whole hog. They are such rare cars. I only have seen two other 1600 Zagatos in the UK. Three, sorry, three is a um, semi, that semi race one I know as well. Um, and I wanted to make it very special very personal to me two-year project and i look at the costs and there was a lot of labor involved weirdly because it's a four-cylinder engine and little parts to do this rebuild weren't that bad you think we've got new manifold in there we've got all fully rebuilt engine new pistons valves all sorts of things carburetors yes they were mine they came out the shed finally found a use of them after storing them hoarding them for about 30 years now they're on here and the parts was 18,753 pounds in total to do this rebuild the labor was a lot more it we're talking around 40 five thousand pounds or thereabouts of labor add the vat overall this has cost eighty seven thousand pounds to get to this standard the car fortunately i knew it was a bit rogue when i bought it so i bought it pretty well i bought in the teens but it's just over a hundred thousand pounds for this car i don't care i bought this for me to enjoy forevermore it's not for sale just for this moment in time when 50 years ago this sparked my interest in cars that has been a lifelong passion that's why i've done this car that's why i hope you've enjoyed this rebuild i can't wait to the weather to improve and actually take this out and go drive this car because i think it's just going to be ace so there you go there's a special harry's garage for christmas day i hope you enjoyed it if you have keep watching keep subscribing more videos coming along very soon